And hello, welcome everyone to our uh, video on turbulence modeling. So in the last video, we were talking about some of the basic implementation uh, methods in OpenFOAM. So we talk about the uh, wall function and we talk about how you can define turbulent parental number near the wall and away from the wall based on this. And uh, towards the wall, we have a turbulent parental number at a constant of 0 0.85. That would usually be I mean you can define your own otherwise you use this default and you can see that uh, um, yeah new tw over t that uh, over parental number this will become you know calculated and written as your uh, I, I believe your alpha t okay so that's that's uh, that's what you will get okay so that's what this whole uh, turbulent parental number is supposed to do of course there are other models available Okay, uh, if you would actually read the, you should use this, uh, this grep function. So you type grep r parental number. For example, you go to form src, then you, you go to grep r, and you just type prt here, and then it will go and show you where all this turbulent parental number is defined. Uh, you would see some in entity diffusivity, for example. Uh, sometimes even in the um, yeah wall functions like the alpha Jaya Tequili wall function. That one's a little bit different from the normal alpha t wall function we were talking about earlier. So I mean whether you're using OpenFoam the ESI version or the CFD direct or open form org, it is very similar in code. So in this respect, there's almost, uh, the differences are quite negligible. So um, besides uh, alpha T wall function, you also have a Jaya Tikili wall function. And this is his PhD thesis. I put the description in the, the link in the descriptions. And these are some of the references here. What does this wall function actually look like? So remember we have a t plus uh, a t plus the function uh, t plus function uh, which is uh, you have t plus as a function also called y plus right so what they have here instead is uh, t plus as a function of u plus so remember u plus has this uh, function here in the uh, log wall region uh, log law of the wall region and what uh, this this term this uh, function does is just to uh, adapt this u plus function and make it into the t function. So how does it do that? It just says t plus here equals to the average uh, turbulent parental number you use. Uh, so again, for this uh, Jaya Tikili wall function, a constant parental number is assumed for the entire boundary layer. So PRT average is being used here rather than a dynamic uh, pre turbulent parental number across the board. I mean, a dynamic turbulent, dynamically varying turbulent parental number that varies across the boundary layer. You take an average or you use an uh, average representative, representative turbulent parental number. Of course, you, you will have your U velocity profile, which you will kind of copy and paste all of this here. And that's where you get your uh, logarithmic dependence of t from then you have this constant 9.24 these are empirical so you have the ratio of the uh, parental number molecular parental number yeah the parental number we are all used to then of course you have the turbulent parental number of minus one then you have some exponential term over here 1 plus 0 0.28 times exponential minus 0 0.007 parental number over the turbulent parental number now this of course, uh, this actually takes into account the variation with the viscous sublayer, and it's used in open form under the alpha Jayatikili wall function. And uh, this is where it is, uh, inside this uh, wall function. Uh, you'll see all of this being defined here, blah blah blah. Then uh, this is the source code. Okay. Actually the source code is defined in uh, C. Okay, and there should be a there should be a C file for you, you to take a look at. So you see there's a C file to the left, you can expand it out. All right, and you can check out the source code here. All right, uh, 
So you just take a look at the left in the OpenFoam API guide. Uh, this is where you will find this wall function. You see, uh, 9.24 blah 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 parental number to 0 0.75. Okay, so maybe sometimes you'll, you'll find variations of, of this sort where you um, you have this scalar PRAT. PRAT is actually the ratio of these parental numbers. So sometimes, uh, depending on the literature you use, you you might see this uh, pop up here. Okay. Okay. So open form may use a slightly different form, uh, whichever. Okay. Uh, but the idea is more or less the same. You will still have this. Uh, uh, yeah, this kind of function being calculated and this this is called I think the scalar P the scalar P is over here so uh, yeah we we have this kind of function that's being plugged into the, the profile here I'm not going to go into so much detail okay I'm not going to go too into so much detail uh, but yeah, it, this this is the idea, and this this wall function is actually again mixed. It is made for heat transfer in turbulent pipe flow, so this this is uh catered for that. And if you notice, it actually uh takes into account the variation in parental number. Though of course it's not really that much. Uh, I mean uh, the parental number should not vary that much unless the compressibility and the the variation in heat capacity, everything changes a lot. Okay, I don't think compressibility has anything to do with parental number at this point, but no, it's, it does not. Uh, it's mu CP over K, so, uh, so there'll be viscosity changes, there'll be heat capacity changes, thermal conductivity changes, all these are dependent on temperature. So these, these will be taken into account here. Uh, but again, the defect is not very big because it's dampened by this uh, exponential thing. But uh, yeah, it does take into account some of that. All right, and it takes a, into account visca the variation in the viscous sublayer, if I'm not wrong. So, uh, is this suitable for natural and mixed convection? So the answer is no. It was actually made for pipe flow. But if it happens to match, uh, like we've seen uh, before. Uh, if you actually see in this uh, in this past experiment, uh, I mean, what the what the data actually shows is that for the viscous sublayer, you use any kind of Rens model to simulate, it is still okay. But in the log law layer, it may not match as well. So you might want to use a different strategy to do the log law region. For example, the PLIDDES, uh, PLDDES. Uh, uh, strategy or something else or you you use a LES strategy with a very very fine mesh to model your turbulence there now what about uh, natural convection so this is more or less the the total uh, rough guide or as to where where this uh, jet uh, how open foam deals with uh, the heat transfer bit Okay, there's a turbulent parental number, there is the Jaya Tekili wall function which you can use in addition to your standard alpha T wall function. Uh, so this one's a little bit more complex but it's still meant for pipe flow uh, by and large. So okay, next thing we have LES models for natural convection. Alright, so the open form actually has oh, okay, yes, my G G rep G R E P uh, uh, is finished. Okay, I forgot to come back here. Uh, yeah, so it uh, it is in uh, the J to Kili wall function. It's over here. It's in turbulence models, compressible, blah 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 blah. So go to form source and and type G R E P, uh, that dash R, and you just type in whatever piece of text you want to find there, and it will show you. It will come up with this list and show you where it is. All right, so. That's that. Uh, I want to go to foam tutorials and show you, you know, LES for natural convection. So where you would find that is in the combustion folder. Okay, and you will see fire foam. And you will go to LES. These are all LES cases which they use for fire foam. Uh, one of these examples is compartment fire. 
all right uh, compartment fire you can go vi constant uh, turbulence okay so let's go cd constant all right let's go turbulence properties and over here you should see a k equation coming out here so if you go to the top you go to the top you will see LES simulation is being defined and in the LES properties the model being defined here is the k equation not the dynamic k equation your step is a standard k equation so standard k equation model uh, it is oh, actually over here okay this is the dynamic k equation model which you can also find uh, if you have standard k equation model it's over here you can see the k equation c file okay source file here uh, so this is where you will find your k equation model again if you if you want to search here okay uh, if you want to search here you won't find the turbulent parental number in this in this uh, in this file over here 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 just deals with the fluid mechanics part where you would find your where you would find your uh, heat transfer related stuff it will be in this uh, what do you call that eddy diffusivity so regardless of what turbulence model you use whether it's k equation dynamic k equation whatever all your heat transfer is being solved through this eddy diffusivity c file here in open form and it will use a constant parental number uh, representative of the entire uh, representative of of the entire domain except for the boundaries of course so that's how open form does this and yeah it's been shown to be reasonably successful for simulating fire which is pretty complicated uh, but yeah les is used here in this fire form okay so the chemical reactions the fluid dynamics and the radiation heat transfer and convection and conduction heat transfer are all in this uh, in this uh, situation here okay so it's a uh, pretty pretty good pretty important and if you want to see radiation properties which I have not really touched but they are over here they use this finite volume discrete ordinates method okay this this is one of the things here so I'm not going to go in too much into detail of th about these uh, but I'll just uh, continue all right uh, in this in this setup the smaller cells just to give you an idea are about 1.25 times 1.25 times 1.25 cm you can actually take a look into the in the block mesh okay vi system block mesh dictionary all right so this is the block mesh dictionary which it's not it's not really a it's not really uh, done the way we normally do it okay it's not done the way we normally do it but we can see uh, roughly okay you can see the, the there's an inlet there's an outlet uh, all of this is being defined and we can see uh, I believe yeah i believe you can uh yeah you can find some of these actually online okay it's a bit hard to read this block mesh file because i'm yeah anyway th this this is actually a macro to help you define your block mesh okay uh is to help it to give a very nice mesh setup okay for block mesh uh so that you have a very even very orthogonal les uh and LES mesh so that you can uh, do these calculations without too much of the the errors coming from a very skewed mesh okay so this is this is where you'll find it and of course here the the smaller cells again they're about 1.25 by 1.25 by 1.25 found this in literature if you take a look at uh, Chatterley's paper here large eddy simulation of fire plumes okay this this is actually where you will find the um, the uh, parameters for this uh, setup so this is the uh, box fire so this is actually it's kind of different from this compartment fire here all right uh, this compartment fire here is to pertaining to uh, yeah using a normal k equation 
method here the geometry may be slightly different but the methodology is very similar you have a constant parental number and you are solving using the k equation so that's that's how this natural convection is being solved in open form okay using this uh, les k equation method okay so for fires it's really good um, and this is the standard method in open form for des modeling uh, there isn't too much here to talk about uh, but and yeah there isn't too much here to talk about but if you talk about a discretization scheme for des you normally want uh yeah this is kind of off topic a little bit but uh, important nonetheless for rent schemes Reynolds average and we you usually like to use an upwind scheme but for les scheme you usually like to use a second order central differencing or in open form is known as linear that kind of scheme um, but for des detached ID simulation how can you define these schemes uh, one of these ways i mean because there are reynolds average rents regions and les regions so you cannot use the same scheme throughout right i mean you have to use the same scheme, one scheme throughout your entire open form uh, simulation file but uh, it's a bit difficult because uh, ideally you want rents to use an upwind scheme and les to use a more precise scheme so one of the ways to circumvent this is the use of this des divergent hybrid divergent scheme which is you can blend between a linear and a gauss uh, upwind scheme or linear upwind scheme over here uh, but again i tried for a heat transfer this doesn't seem to work it only seems to work for fluid if you're only doing it with uh, fluid mechanics so yeah yeah it seems to work with fluid mechanics uh, maybe there was some bug the last time i tried but uh, the last time i tried it could not but yeah maybe maybe you can go and try this uh, des hybrid the discretization scheme see if it works but the last time i tried it could not okay but anyway just to let you know this is available and it's it works for fluid mechanics uh fluid mechanics uh, simulations uh, if you can use it for the heat transfer as well, that would be great uh, and it's available. Otherwise, I would say if you can, if you can uh, bypass all the instability problems, use a linear scheme because it's more accurate. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, upwind, upwind schemes, they will kind of uh, muddle and reduce the accuracy of LES simulations. Okay. So that's that's why I say it doesn't quite work for heat transfer, and if you want to, okay. Overall, um, that's that's how OpenFOAM does it, and just reminder: always try to check your check your simulation with experiments. So some of these uh, checks, for example, for IDDES models, okay. This this is uh, yeah. You, you should actually check with uh, DN, uh, DNS or empirical correlations. So for example, here K omega SSD IDDS is tested against the empirical uh, correlation here with uh, turbulent parental number equals 0 0.9. Uh, this is for channel flow with dimples. So just a reminder for you, please do check out all this uh, with online uh, in the literature. And aiding and mixed convection flow, you can always check DING et L. And this was actually compared against DNS. So do make sure to check with experiments uh, uh, or DNS simulations. If not, it's very hard to verify uh, to what degree uh, of error your your simulation actually has. So the, how I mean like how, how else will you know that this uh, IDDES or wheel model is a 10 to 15% off? Okay, so this these are some, some basic basic tips of how these equations are put into CFD uh, code such as open form and with that I kind of close up the this uh, chapter on convective heat transfer in turbulence modeling um, yeah at least uh, yeah close up most of these uh, the models top uh, uh, went through lots of models the IDDS models the RENS models the LES models and yeah uh, i'll close close up this part where it talks about the ways 
in which empirical models, all, all these models are being used to model uh, turbulence and heat transfer. So that's that's it for now. Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this uh, this uh, videos useful. Do leave a like and subscribe if you uh, have found it to be so. So see you. Bye bye.